Welcome back, everybody, to Pinoy Crossover. Mike and Mark still here. CJ still here. So let's just dive in. Team Cata, something that again, no one like, not a lot of people will play for Team Cata. Obviously, I'd like to play, but you got to be selected. You got to make it somehow. I want to. I want to dive into like that experience of being Team Cata, the bus rides or the journeys. Did you fly? Like, tell tell us. Like the first game being in Team Canada, how was the journey or like to the game and practices? Uh, well, playing for my first tournament was FISU, the mm -hmm. University Games. Uh, we started our training camp here. Um, the very first time we put the jersey on was our picture day um, down at Ryerson University. Mm -hmm. But it was just being able to put on a jersey that said Canada. And it's, you look down while you're taking your pictures and you're looking like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna play in this jersey soon. Yeah. So just being able to put it on, just to take pictures, you're, you're like, in your mind, it's mind blowing, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, so we went to Taiwan for the university games. Mm -hmm. um, I would never think I'd ever go there, but I mm. ended up going there, playing basketball, and it was our very first game. I started and I looked down, anthem's going, just bow my head, just thanking God for you cry? this almost opportunity. Cry, almost crying? <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe, no, maybe, you, maybe, you know, just focus on the game. Yeah. 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 Keep it together, composed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so it was, it was a dream come true, like I said, like a memorable experience, just, just to even put the jersey on and play. Mm -hmm. uh, it took all the time, like we had two-a-days with lifts. There was so much time and effort put into it, and that's stuff that people don't really see that happens behind the scenes, how mm. much effort goes in, how much blood, sweat, tears, everything. So just knowing that I put in all that effort to be where I am, it all paid off. Mm -hmm. That's something you, you look back at and like you thank yourself for everything you put in, right? From all the off time of working out and being the best and being in the best shape that you can to be playing at the international level, it's not nothing you can ask for. Like mm -hmm. it's everything. How would you describe your experience playing in the international level compared to your experience playing at Humber? Like, what was... Um, there's a big gap. Um, mm -hmm. But even if playing university compared to international, like I said, a, big, a bigger gap, or sorry, bigger gap from college to international, and then there's also university to international. It's just the pace of the game is so much faster. Everyone is more consistent in scoring. You, you have to be smarter. I can't just gamble and go for steals like I do in college. Mm -hmm. uh, just know my personnel. You have your scout looking at who you're guarding and who you're potentially guarding, uh, what you do on screens, what, what sets to play. There's, there's just so much stuff that happens in the game and even before the game mm -hmm. where you have to look at like, you're studying Damn. like their team. There's, like, there's a lot to look at, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like almost professional in a yeah. sense, right? It, it, I would yeah. say it is, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what aspect of your game did you notice that you had to improve upon from what you, what you were doing in college or what you were doing in Humber back when you were playing international? What was some of the aspect of your game that you just, hey, I got to get better on this, I got to improve on this? Uh, my conditioning, that's the big part. Mm -hmm. Being able to withstand like 30 minutes at least mm -hmm. in a game at that pace it's different than playing an average of 35 minutes a game in college, yeah. right? It's a slower pace. You get to do what you want. You're more relaxed. But then at the international level, you can be getting pressured full court and having to do three different crossovers to get, get over half or trying to push someone through to get open. And there's, a, there's just so much more mm -hmm. at that level. And being, being conditioned well, it would help you mentally because now you're not fatigued. Now you don't make... Uh, dumb turnovers or weak passes. There, there's just a lot that conditioning has to do with it. Mm -hmm. And how was the venue? Like, was the ven like? Could you describe the venue? For um, I would say I would compare it to like an NCAA college arena. Yeah. It was just surrounded with like light, bright lights, yeah. fans sitting like all across. Yeah. You have your big scoreboard in the middle. Like it's something I. At that level, I'm just like, I look up and I'm like, wow, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. This is it. Yeah. And then and you got signed too, right? International? To um, yeah, I, I ended up playing. I'm playing overseas yeah. right now in, in Denmark. How did that come about? Like, what was um, the... I was able to get in contact with an agent. Well, my yeah. AJ helped me with, he, he knows this guy. Yeah. Um, he's out in Greece, Thomas. Um, he has, he had a, a couple other girls from Ontario yeah. that he, uh, 
we're the agents of. So I just got connected with him. I asked some of my friends, oh, how do you like him? They had a good connection. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to sign with him. And then he was able to get me a contract out in Denmark. Wow, Denmark. Wow. Oh, yeah. How, how many games did you, did you already play the season with them? Or uh, you played, we're yeah. halfway through the season. Yeah. We're four and three right now. Yeah. Um, it, we're, we're pretty good. We're top contenders for like the second and third spot. Mm -hmm. We're fourth right now. Uh, the games we lost to the t were from teams above us. Yeah. So, and the teams, the games we lost were single digit losses except to like the number one team, but we're getting there. We're, we're at that stage where we know how to beat teams and we know what we need from ourselves to win. Mm. Are you the only Canadian there? Or yeah, and there's yeah. also, I have an uh, American friend on that team too. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, is that a dream in itself too? Playing professionally. Yeah. So you went from Humber, maybe studying and playing, and then you went to Team Canada because oh, CJ Represent is representing, you got to represent, and then now you're playing. It's like a job now. Yeah. yeah. So when you got signed, and is that a new type of composure, a new type of mentality once you're professional? Uh, yeah, it's, it's more, more basketball based now. You don't mm -hmm. think about school, um, and this is your job. This is something that I can't just eat anything I want mm. and I have to maintain obviously uh, a figure and conditioning and strength to be able to play at this pace. It's still an international game. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of these girls who do play for their country too and that they're, they're just as good as any other girl. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that and all the training, extra training that you have to do, putting up shots, off, off days, just work it's just a work habit that you have to get used to yeah how do you like denmark i guess the cult the culture and like the the place you're at it's a great it's yeah. more i i see it's a lot family based and mm -hmm. they're all friendly over there it's 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 a small country compared to just our city toronto yeah uh right when i got there i'm just like whoa like everybody <laughs> bikes there oh, no yeah. one no one really bikes here but yeah. biking is like you bike from when you're young and oh, really? they, yeah it's it's a big thing over there um yeah I would say a lot of people are friendly. Um, I've met a lot of people and families from my host family. Mm -hmm. um, and I've just been able to create relationships with people where I don't feel homesick, mm -hmm. where I can now just hang out with some people and then go about my business. Mm -hmm. How's your schedule usually like? like from games to training, like how's your day in the week? Um, well, we practice four times a week. Um, which isn't much. I also coach kids with my club mm. three times a week. And then we, we have extra like strength training. I do that three times a week. Um, and then I have on my off days, I put up shots or hang out with some friends or, you know, just hang out. You're a professional. Like you're yeah. independent yeah. living yeah. in Denmark. That's, and ha like how, so you're here with us right yeah. now, but... Did you just have a vacation or something yeah, like that? Uh, yeah, we had a two-week holiday. Mm -hmm. So I'll be going back next week, um, mm -hmm. New Year's Day, because the following week we have uh, we start back our, our second second half of the season. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Perfect. How were your games so far, though, like in terms of your mentality coming in and how you're getting accustomed to, because this is technically your first season into playing professionally? Yeah, so I, like any other game, I treat it as a basketball game. There isn't, there isn't much you can do within the four lines other than put the ball in the net. So it's really just getting to know what the coach wants from me mm -hmm. and what he expects and what he needs me to do. So as the playing the point guard, I still have to score, but at the same time, my main goal is to get everyone the easiest shot possible. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that. At the same time, I've been rebounding, getting steals, doing everything else that I'm used to doing. So with doing all of that at this level, it just goes back to my conditioning. I have to keep it up just so I can make the right decisions, especially in close games where it's needed, and then basically be CJ and be CJ. try to finish it. <laughs> now, you're, see, you're, you're coaching a lot now too, right? If you were to give any advice to any like, female ballers, any ballers that want to play professionally, because you went the route, you went development, you yeah. went through different trainers and everything, and you see a lot of bas the basketball world, what would you tell them in terms of working uh, to play basketball? Um, females, mm -hmm. even males, um, continue to, to push yourself. There isn't anything stopping you except for yourself. 
you you will go as far as you want to go. So look, bring it back to my injury. I could have just stopped it there and thought, okay, this is done, done with. Mm-hmm. But no, I'm like, I think I'm gonna be better than what I was. And look at this, I I was better. I I've mm-hmm. made it as far as I've dreamt of, and now I'm trying to make it further. So just like that, within yourselves, you have to set a goal and think. Okay, if that's my goal, how do I how do I reach it now? How do you reach it? Okay, I have to put this time and effort. I have to train these days, but then I also have to do school. So it's all about time management and just knowing what steps to take to where you need to go. Mm-hmm. Great that's advice. Crazy. Now we want to really acknowledge that, like for a Filipino basket, like you're not it's only amazing. a Filipino, ba- like a, a woman that's a Filipino and played the highest level of basketball, but yeah. you're considered. One of the greatest <laughs> women basketball players. Think about your all your acknowledgments, right? Yeah. So we really want to thank you for coming onto the show, and um, we really want to see the, f- the future. And if you get to the Olympics, it's like you made like every, you yeah. made it for all Dream. of us in a sense, right? Yeah. So yeah. any anything you'd like to shout out to any people, anyone that you'd like to give thanks to? My grandparents, you know, always taking me everywhere, supporting me. Uh, my family back home. Uh, friends and teammates that I've played with, coaches, thank you for always being there. There you go. And thank you for joining us, everyone. Marky Mark, anything you'd like to say? Well, we just want to wish our fans a happy holidays. I hope you guys enjoy your break. And keep tuning in because we have more stories for you guys. Yeah, who, know, who knows? Maybe if you're watching, maybe your jersey will get retired like CJ's. And if not, just keep playing ball and just do it for the sake of the game because, hey, stay balling. <laughs>